There is a two-page handout for this presentation, and it's easy to find. It's on my web page under Web Lectures. This is the first presentation in the series, and my web page is easy to find. Just type my name in Google, and I'm the first that appears. All right. My title summarizes the basic idea I'd like to offer. I think we should get beyond this so-called evolution versus creation debate because I am convinced that there's way more than just two simple positions whereby one is either an evolutionist or a creationist. Well, we can ask the question, where did this black and white approach to origins emerge? And we can go back to the 19th century and look at Thomas Henry Huxley, who was known as Charles Darwin's bulldog. And when Darwin's famed book on the origin of species came out in 1859, Huxley wrote a review of the book and said the following. Extinguished theologians, that is, dead professors of theology, just like me, lie about the cradle of every science as the strangled snakes of Hercules. And there's baby Hercules breaking the necks off of snakes. And history records that whenever science and orthodoxy, and orthodoxy here means religion, that whenever science and religion have been fairly opposed, the latter, that is religion, or in other words, religious people, has been forced to retire from the lists, bleeding and crushed if not annihilated, scotched if not slain. You may not agree with him, but you've got to give him credit. He's quite poetic. So says Huxley. In the light of the Huxley quote, it is here where we find the problem with regards to the origins debate, both in his day and in our day. The discussion is cast in a simple dichotomy. As I've defined it in your handout, a dichotomy is a division of an issue into two simple positions, and it's caused by black and white, or if you wish, either or type of thinking. So, you're either on the science side, or you're on the religion side. But you can't be both. You have to pick one, A or B, science or religion. Let me give you an example of the so-called scientific position. And this is Julian Huxley, who is the grandson of Thomas Henry Huxley. And Huxley, at the centennial celebration of Charles Darwin's Origin of Species in 1959 at the University of Chicago, said the following. The Earth was not created it evolved. Do you see the dichotomy immediately? Here is Huxley, a world-class scholar who's trapped in either or black and white type of thinking. Continuing, so did all the animals and plants that inhabit it, including our human cells, mind and soul, as well as brain and body. Now what else evolved? So did religion. In other words, what's religion? Well, it's nothing but a spin-off of the evolutionary process that provided for the human herd a certain advantage that if you evolved this characteristic, it was good for the community. Continuing, Huxley says, the truth will set us free. Of course, 
these are the words of Jesus in the Gospel of John. But it's not the truth of Jesus that will set anyone free, according to Huxley. It is evolutionary truth. Frees us from subservient fear of the unknown and supernatural and exhorts us to face this new freedom. It shows us our destiny and our duty. Evolutionary man can no longer take refuge from his loneliness in the arms of a divinized father figure. Now, here's the move that Huxley makes, whom he has himself created. In other words, standing right in the face of the first chapter of the Bible, Genesis 1, where in verses 26 and 27, the Bible says that humans have been created in God's image. What Huxley does here is he says, who is God? Well, we're the ones who've created God in our image. Ultimately, God is a fabrication of our minds. Continuing, Huxley says, nor escape from the responsibility of making decisions by sheltering under the umbrella of divine authority. In other words, humans are the captain of their own ship. We don't need God telling us what to do. We can make our own decisions without God or any reference to him. Finally, the evolutionary vision is enabling us to discern, however incompletely, the outline of the... Now, isn't this interesting? You remove traditional religion, there seems to be a spiritual or psychological vacuum that needs to be filled, and Huxley brings in a new religion, which he called a religion without revelation, or in other words, a religion without God, of the new religion that we can be sure will arise to serve the needs of the coming era. What Huxley offers to us is a popular understanding of science, and you'll notice I've used quotation marks. It's also the popular understanding of evolution. This is a view in which there's no God. And at the same time, you'll also notice that with origins, he connects ethics. And this often happens in this discussion. And the type of ethics he embraces are humanistic ethics, or in other words, humanism, which is a belief, and it's just like a religious belief, that humans alone determine values and morals, in other words, right and wrong. But instead of using these popular definitions, how about if we use some more accurate terms and professional definitions? Huxley's position is better termed scientism. And what scientism is, it is a conflation. And what I mean by conflation it's a sloppy blending of distinct ideas into one simple idea. So what he does is he conflates science, which he has some excellent science, but he blends it. He hooks it up with a secular, WV is worldview, and collapses the two together to go ahead and give the impression that this is the scientific view. Let's now look at the other half of the dichotomy, what is commonly perceived as the religious position on origins. This is Dr. Henry Morris, the former president of the Institute for Creation Research. He's a wonderful Christian and has had an amazing impact on American Christianity. According to Dr. Morris, there are only two basic worldviews. So you see the dichotomy 